If you drive a direct injection vehicle, your intake valves may look just like this. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to take off this carbon and make your intake valves go from looking like this to looking like that. With a few simple tools and a little bit of time, let's go. What's up guys and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be cleaning the carbon off the intake valves on the 4.2 Audi A6. So far I have the car taken off to this point. If you need to see how to take off the intake manifold, check out the video on the, up in the top right hand corner right here and that will definitely help you. This video is strictly just cleaning out the intake valves here. Uh, a few things you're going to need right off top is you will need a gas mask, a pair of safety glasses, you will need this special adapter right here, which is linked below in the description. This goes right over the ports here, as you'll see in the video. And we'll go through all the other tools here at the end of the job. I'll show you everything I used to get to this point and to clean this out. And next, make sure you uh, run down to your local Harbor Freight. You can get one of these blasters right here. These work great for carbon cleaning. I've already used this a few rounds. Um, check out my other video here if you want to see the 3.2 carbon cleaning. Uh, but yeah, this is only like 30 bucks, and I think the walnut media um, is like another 20, 25 maybe. And I've gone through a few jobs so far, and I still have so much of this left, so plenty of that. Let's go check out the intake valves. All right, originally I was just coming in here to replace this oil pressure switch right here. It was leaking all over the front of the engine when I bought the car. Got it for deals, that was one of the issues. And then I realized how much carbon deposits are built up in here so we're going to go through and end up removing all of that so once you're here one of the first steps you're going to want to do is just grab these with a pair of pliers and remove all of these torque flaps right here so on direct injection vehicles most of the time it's every 60,000 miles or so that the carbon cleaning needs to be completed. I don't know when this has ever been done or if ever. I imagine it's been done at least once because uh, I've definitely seen worse than this. This vehicle has 161,000 miles on it. Uh, so definitely in need of getting all this out. Um, this can cause rough idle and lack of compression and all kinds of issues. So the first thing I like to do is come through with these picks and uh, just get the bulk of it out before I even come through with the walnut blaster because for me it's just a lot more effective. The walnut blaster could take this off but it just takes uh, more time and, and more blasting to get it off when you can just come through and break it off really quick and, and get it all cleaned up. So that's the process we're doing now, pulling out these huge chunks before we come in with the walnut blaster and get it all out. So I did link everything below in the description, guys. All the tools I used, uh, everything that I could find that's helpful on the internet is definitely linked below in the description. So check that out. Drop this video a like or drop a comment. I always try to answer all my questions. And uh, yeah, let's get the rest of this carbon cleaned out and jump to the uh, walnut blasting now. Thanks for watching. All right, so after you scrape it out a little bit, you have a bunch of carbon on the bottom. This is a good time to vacuum this out real quick. This gets a lot of the big chunks out of the way, makes it easier for the walnuts to do their job. Um, so we're gonna hit this with the vacuum right now. Vacuum with this, uh, what's like $25 attachment here. And of course that fits right over. And just block that side with your thumb while you vacuum. So you might set up, I just got a shop vac. All right, so we have all, all the valves on this side are closed and ready to go. So we're just gonna finish up scraping these clean and then we're gonna hit it with a walnut blaster. So let's jump into a time lapse. You'll find your own technique, use different angled picks, screwdrivers, don't scar it, just scrape it lightly. Cleaners, brushes, whatever you want, you can choose. This is just how I do it. And uh, let's jump into the rest of it. So again, we're just coming in and breaking off the big chunks and getting everything loose. Uh, and out of the way for the for the walnuts to come through and do this job. So it's a little tedious and a little bit of a repeat on a V8, especially for if that's what you're working on. A four cylinder is obviously a lot quicker. V8 is going to take a little bit more time. V10 <laughs> even longer. Uh, I will say that the V8 seemed a little bit easier because I didn't I didn't have to take out the fuel injectors to get in here. Uh, on the V6, you have to take out the whole fuel rail and the fuel injectors and all that stuff unless you somehow get lucky. Yummy, look at that. Mm, that's a big chunk. 
And if you don't have like large carbon buildups like this, you probably don't have to come through here and scrape everything. Like let's say you doing it at 60,000 miles and it's your first time doing it. You really probably don't need to scrape everything. You can get away with just blasting it with this, uh, with the walnuts. And I have seen people use dry ice before, which is really cool too, but obviously more of an expensive setup. The setup here was very, very cheap and effective. Sometimes you can get away with just cleaning it like that. Um, it's not recommended, but this removes a lot of the carbon too. And if you don't have the right tools, you could soak some cleaner in here and hit it with a brush. That's one option I've seen. It doesn't get it perfect, but it gets it better. A lot better than how that looks. Um, as you can see, a lot of that stuff just like kind of scraped out in there. So try to get you guys some better camera angles and get you guys some in-depth before and after photos here. But basically you'll find your little technique after you do this. This is before the walnut blast. So I'm gonna do the walnut blast in a second here and uh, go from there. <laughs> So once you get the intake ports and the valves to about this stage right here where they don't have any uh, large chunks of buildup anymore, you've pretty much got all the giant chunks out of there. Now it's ready for the walnut shells and the blaster. Right, so we got our little uh, blaster right here. Get your abrasive material. Even that's probably too much, and you should wear a mask when you do this too because uh, it gets everywhere. All right, y'all, this is what I gotta do to get the shot. I highly recommend wearing a face mask because of the dust on it. And I also highly recommend wearing safety glasses because uh, it's gonna blast you in the eye. It's gonna go everywhere. And you're gonna wanna cover up all these ports that are open and anything else you don't want walnuts in. We're actually gonna cover up the fuel lines too. I don't wanna get any pieces of walnut in either of these fuel lines. And foil works the best for this. So let's go grab some foil real quick. All right, so we got the foil. So you take the foil like this. A little more gentle this time. There we go. And then don't forget to take a bite. All right, next you want to connect your air hose. Give it a little test shot. It's working, it's cool. All right, so we got carbon cleaning deluxe here, right? All right, now you just take your blaster gun and stick it down there and you're gonna to try to blast at every angle that you can. Um, and you'll do a bunch of blasting on this one side and you're gonna flip it over and do the other side the same way and just kind of repeat until you get that, uh, until you get it nice and shiny. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to clean it up real nice and good in the end. And uh, in the meanwhile, let's cue that piano music right.
valuable info here. But you're pretty much just going to repeat this process on every single intake valve. Uh, next I'm going to show you guys how to rotate the engine uh, to get the valves up and down on the other side. So we can move on to the other side once we get this side nice and shiny. So we're just going to suck the nuts out here. Pause. Uh, and then uh, yeah, check it out make sure that it's all good. See, sometimes the walnuts miss pieces, so I just come back in there with a pick and get those pieces out. Very tedious. All right, so at this point, just with those walnut blasts, that is what we're looking like right now. So we still got a little bit of carbon on there, and if you guys know my channel, you guys know I'm not gonna leave that there. You could be lazy and do it, but I'm not. So coming down this line, looking much better. See, we still got a little bit of cleanup and that's why those hooks are good to get back in those areas where your hands can't get to. Or not where your hands, but where the where your nuts can't get to. You gotta use picks for where your nuts can't get to, you know? Looking much better, much better. In comparison to that, much better. All right, so you can grab some uh, Jet Spray Carb Choke Cleaner or any kind of like carb cleaner like this. And what I do is just fill it up slowly. If you spray it too fast, it'll spray back at you. Since your valves are sealed, it should hold it. If it doesn't hold it, then you got problems. Holds liquids better than your butt. <laughs> Remember guys, this is just my way I do it. You guys can find your own way. You don't have to do this at all. I'm just OCD about it and I clean everything, so. Whoever's getting this car next is getting hooked up because the fella's about to be shining. All right, we're gonna give it uh, five minutes. All right, and we still have all these uh, intake manifold flaps here, so. I do the same thing with that. Just kind of come through and spray them out. Somebody told me in my last video that I could just run sea foam through it or do some gum out and it would clean out my intake. Imagine running this through your intake. Even if your car is on, dude, it's not gonna clean your car enough. Like, this is constantly spraying and it's not gonna clean it off. Even after soaking it, I still gotta scrub this, so. Welcome to doing it right. Let these soak for a little while. Sorry, excuse the noise, but this is sat now for about 15 minutes or so. A little longer, you can see it's kind of like black and swampy in there. So from here, I'd like to take a little brush like this. Just kind of get all the little walls on each of the cylinders, or each of the ports. I picked these up at Harbor Freight for like six bucks. All right, now these have been all scrubbed out right here, as you can see. So we're gonna grab the blaster and the vacuum, and we're gonna vacuum all this stuff out, and then we're gonna blast it again, and it's gonna be... So here's the intake valves all cleaned up now, after probably like the second or third round. It takes a few tries to get it right. Um, it doesn't actually be perfect like this either. 
but I'm always going to do it to the best of my ability. <clears throat> and that's pretty much the best of my ability right there. The only way I've seen it done better is using dry ice. But all these valves looking much cleaner than before. Especially in comparison to this other side over here, which we're about to do next. And as you can see, even though I had it covered, we still had some walnut pieces fall down in there. Um, and that's just the way that it goes sometimes. But, but luckily it's just walnuts, and as long as you don't get too many nuts in there, you're gonna be all right. That's what she said. All right, so now we have this whole side covered up, just with paper towels again, like we did the other side, and time to start on these valves. But before we can start here, we have to rotate the engine just enough so that all these valves are closed. As you guys saw how these are dirty, they all have gaps and they're all open. This side was closed. So you do need this tool right here, crankshaft turning tool. Um, link is in the description for this as well. I think it's only like $16 if you get this just by itself, but if you have one of these Audis, definitely helpful on a half inch. On a half incher. And only rotate the engine uh, clockwise. And you're not gonna get all of them to shut every time. But, gotta get as many as you can closed. So it looks like I got three out of four closed. So make sure you have a tight seal tight as you can see and you can stick a pick down in there to check the corner and see if you're up against the the wall or if there's a gap in the valve so this one's still open so we're going to cover this one back up right here all of these seem closed Yeah, these seem close, so I'm gonna cover up this one and we're gonna clean these three and then we're gonna rotate the engine one more time and then that's when we'll get this last one after that. So, just the name of the game here. That is crazy, it's just like coming off in a layer. Layers. Like an onion. Like just big pieces of chunks. It's not good. Not good, not good. It's like you can put your pick into it and then pull it up like gum. Carbon cleaning is like getting your teeth cleaned for cars. <laughs> and probably pretty obvious at this point, you're just gonna take the vacuum and come back through and repeat the whole process you did on the passenger side on this side now. Uh, grab the blaster and get in all your corners and one helpful tip with the blaster too before you get into it if you make a tip that's a longer um, you can look them up they have like walnut blasting tips uh, they, they kind of just go out and they give you a little bit of an angle it'll make it easier to get in here without the handle hitting the vacuum if you if you see what I mean um, it just gives you a little bit more room and stuff to make it a little more accessible. And either way, this will still work just fine.
It just takes a little bit of time and patience, and then it just depends on your level of like cleanliness, how clean you want each valve. Of course, I'm not going to plan to be here anytime again soon, so I want to get it all done right now, because once I seal the intake back on here, I want it to be problem free for the next 50,000 miles or until I get rid of it, but you get the idea. So, uh, yeah, just going to finish up one up blast on this side real quick, and then we will get to the rest of this. And if you're still watching this far into the video, do me a favor, drop me a like or subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps me grow and helps me make uh, more videos like this so I can help people. Uh, I, I love helping people and giving back. I can't, I can't even count the comments of people saying how much money they've saved. Just have a few videos and, you know, that's where I started too, is just watching videos and saving myself money because I couldn't afford to go to the shop. So, uh, yeah, that's one big thing you guys can help do is uh, just, you know, throw a like on the video and it helps it get out there more and, and more people see it so I hate to be that guy that's like well I could subscribe to the video but man it's a lot of work that goes into these things I probably spent about uh, 10 hours editing this video at least plus the job and all the camera work and all that good stuff so I appreciate you guys watching and especially if you guys made it this far uh, thank you so much and I really hope this video is helpful for you guys also guys I think out of all the hooks this is the best one right here it fits perfectly up against the wall so it doesn't scrape. Like, I've only been using this one. And this one. I, I didn't even use a flathead on this side. So this is after one pass with a walnut, with a walnut blaster here. You'll see that uh, a little bit of my nuts are left in there. But you'll see like there's some areas right there on the side that you can't get the carbon off of without scraping it. So you actually physically have to go in there and hit this to get this to come out. So this is how you gotta like scrape the corner, scrape these hidden areas, and then one more little gold mine for carbon. Take this hook right here, and like right back in here, look at all that. First little scoop, you'll pull out a bunch right behind these little valve seats. Look at that, a bunch more. It's like the from under carbon. Uh, it doesn't show, and it doesn't get it got with a blaster, so. You gotta come back through on that. Let's check out the, here's the other one. Again, kind of the same thing. You still got some carbon, you got a blast down here. This is why I mix it up and I use cleaners and all that stuff too. And then there's this side down here. And you can see that there's still a bunch of chunks down there that didn't get picked up. So those gotta get picked off and uh, dealt with here. Yeah, that's how you gotta get in there. See all that? Yum, yum. So you gotta do your due diligence and really get in on all these little crevices right here. So if you're not the kind of person that likes to take your time on stuff, I would not recommend this job for you. It's not something you can rush, even if you're rushing. So we're gonna take that gum out now. Now, um, now imagine thinking this works without doing all this. Like, you can't just spray this into your car and have this work. I've seen people say that. Quit with the bozo stuff. It's not going to work. I'll show you. I've soaked flaps in this cleaner overnight, and they're still just as dirty as they were before. So, I don't want to hear that. I don't got time for none of that tomfoolery. You guys hold it like a joint or a cigarette. Because again, if this fluid is leaking out, your guys' valves aren't sealed and you guys did it wrong. All right, so now we're gonna let this soak for about five minutes. A few moments later. All right, so this has been soaking now for about five minutes or so. I'm gonna come back through with these brushes and I have another brush right here. So just gonna come in here and scrub the walls. And again, they don't have to be this clean, but uh, I just, this is just how I like to do it. 
Even if this was a customer's car, I would do this the same way. It's just my method, everybody has their own ways. Some people wipe from the front, some people wipe it forward, some people wipe it backwards. Wipe side. Some people wipe from the side, you know? Some people don't wipe at all. Some people use a bidet. So everybody has their way of cleaning. Does that make it wrong? Maybe, if you don't wipe. <laughs> Moral of the story, as long as you're wiping and scrubbing, it's all good. Keep your holes clean and your valve shined. Yeah, see, just like, you just want some love. My theory behind this too is like, if you have carbon on here, it's gonna catch more carbon. If you don't have carbon in here, you're gonna catch less carbon. So your buildup is gonna be slower, in theory. Well, I lost like half my wire bristles. <laughs> Damn you, Harbor Freight. <laughs> Good thing the valves are closed, eh? Yeah. Let's just toss that one and or like fold it up so it doesn't have the bag. Let's see if I lose all my bristles again here. Yeah. Alright, so we learned cutting the brush hurts the brush. Don't cut the brush. It'll ruin the brush. <laughs> I don't want those going everywhere, so I'm just gonna cash that out. We're back in here. Uh, I hit the little slots right here too. Okay, we'll hit it with this one first, cause he's jamming. And remember guys, you don't gotta do none of it like this. Uh, this was really caked on there with a lot of carbon, so I'm just scrubbing it all down. Like I said earlier in the video, if your car is not that bad with that much carbon buildup, you can get away with just blasting it with walnuts and being on your way. Um, me spraying it and scrubbing it like this is just because I want it silver again and I want it polished and looking brand new pretty much. Um, so if you're not like that and you just wanna do a quick blast and be on your way, you could totally do that. Uh, this is just, again, this is just how I, how I get down in here, so uh, scrubbing all this down and getting it as clean as possible. All right, now that you've scrubbed all those, if that's the route you're going, again, do your own thing. Just come back through with the vacuum cleaner. Maybe don't use the wire bristles because they're about to be every fucking where. Holy shit. There's so many in there, it's actually not even funny. I hate these bristles too, why did I do that? I'm trying to be smart. Stupid. And of course, this is the only magnet that fits down in there. Turn the vacuum back on. Yeah, this is my first time using these uh, wire brushes and it will definitely be my last time. Uh, I think probably just with a thorough walnut blasting and possibly just one good wire brush, this would work. But the Harbor Freight ones I'm done with. <laughs> Also, if you guys are doing this job and you guys find a better method, a better technique, or something smarter, or anything like that that you want to share, drop a comment. Uh, share that shit because it's helpful. People want to learn. People want to get better. I know I do, so uh, always looking to improve. So yeah, if you found a better way, definitely, definitely drop that down in the comments below.
All right, so here on the driver's side, here's my finished result on this side as well. Nothing much more I can do or need to do here. Pretty clean. I'm happy with that. So now we just have this one last valve to clean. So I'm gonna cover these holes up and then we're gonna rotate the engine until this one is closed. We're gonna clean this last one and then we're gonna move on to cleaning the intake manifold and smacking this all back together. All right, so now this last subject right here is uh, still open. So we're gonna close this up. All its way up, right? Yeah, you're closed now. Closed? Yeah. All the way? Yeah. Um, dingler. Yuck. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's so gross. So it's like gum. Yeah, it's like crispy and gooey at the same time. I remind was like hard and crunchy. Yeah. It flake off. It just comes off like a ring. Yeah. Like a scuzz ring. <laughs> yum, yum. Put that in the box for collection. Mmm. Yum. And if you made it this far, you're really almost done. We're wanna blasting the last valve here. Let my brother step in and try it because he was watching and want, wanted to hop in here and see what it was like. Um, this is the last leg of it right here. So once you've done this to all cylinders and they're all clean, then you can start the reassembly process, which will be in another video. So stay tuned to the end and you'll see how to put the intake manifold back on that and uh, I also install like oil catch can so we don't have any more carbon BS coming back in here or as much of it coming back in so um, that was a big help as well installing that catch can uh, and made a custom option because I couldn't find any so will be that video uh, putting it back together and then uh, this car is most likely going to get sold so thanks for watching this far once again and uh, let's finish up this last little valve and get her cleaned up All right, now we have all the intake valves cleaned up. I vacuumed up all the residual stuff, cleaned out all the oil that was leaking from the oil pressure switch here. Got all these valves nice and clean. And now we're ready to move on to the intake manifold. We are gonna clean and prep this really quick. This side should look just like this, nice and clean. So we'll get this cleaned up as well. Yeah, but that's it on the carbon cleaning on the engine here. So if you're just doing the engine, this is as far as you gotta go. If you're gonna do the intake manifold, that's what we're about to jump into next. I highly suggest doing it. Maybe not as in depth as I'm about to do it, but you should clean it at least. So let's jump into that now. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.